Extraordinary Americans. My name is Cosmos and this is Extraordinary America. What is Extraordinary America about? Extraordinary America is about the abolition of financial slavery. It is about the financial freedom of the 99%. Why? Well, you see the essence of America and what it means to be American has always been freedom, opportunity for a better life and the pursuit of happiness, but mainly freedom, right? However, that is not what most Americans are facing in reality when it comes to the financial front these days. On these days, most Americans are going through some form of financial bondage or financial slavery. How so? Like most of them are suffering from massive levels of wealth in and income inequality, right? They're going through paycheck to paycheck and they're barely able to make ends meet. They're going through a lot of financial stress, right? Now, because of the coronavirus, many of them have lost their jobs and now they're going through like an acute amount of financial distress where they have to figure out how to put food on the table right for the longest time they've been going through stagnant wages because of globalization and outsourcing of jobs to other countries right and um, they've also been suffering from inflation of prices due to an abundance of money printing right because we are under a fiat monetary system so now in order to keep up with their lifestyle right because of continuous inflation of prices over the last 50 to 60 years combined with stagnant wages where the wages are not keeping up with the with the rise in prices um uh, many and more and more americans had to take debt and which is actually a form of financial bondage or slavery right so altogether due to a reduction of their purchasing power and due to stagflation and debt their not their ability to be free financially has been drastically reduced and the last but not the least is like right now we're going through like we're headed towards an economic depression but in the near future this is going to be when the economy starts getting better, we're going to go through the devaluation, hyperinflation of our dollar, because at this point, lots and lots of money has been printed out of without, which has not been backed by anything tangible, right? This leads to a big inflation or hyperinflation, and that will reduce the purchasing power of every individual dollar, which means if you go and buy, try to buy something in the grocery store, instead of costing $5 or $10, it'll cost like $100 or something like that, right? So basically, all this combined together means that right now, even though the ideal of America has always been freedom, when it comes to the financial front, we're going through a period of financial slavery, and this is totally unacceptable. So Extraordinary America is about the abolition of financial slavery. It is about the financial freedom of the 99%. We do not work for money. We should always make money work for us. Right. And how is this to be done in the short term? In the short term, this is to be done by protecting your purchasing power of your money by investing in gold, silver or cryptocurrencies, which will protect the fiat money, uh, which right now is the dollar from devaluation and eventual hyperinflation in the near future. And in the long term, this is to be done by number one the transformation of the 99% into entrepreneurs and investors on the light side. Number two, the creation of spiritual economic institutions led by Jedipreneurs that provide a universal basic income along with the five essentials of food, housing, clothing, healthcare, and education, right? Uh, for the 99% uh, because, and the fact that they'll treat all the 99% as part of a one percenter family on the light side because we are all the collective family the collective children of one father and mother who are the creators of the universe and number three the replacement of the fiat monetary system with a debt-based I mean the debt-based fiat monetary system with the American dream standard so in today's video I wanted to talk about briefly about the concept of of like of entrepreneurship and investing as a culture in America. So you see, the thing is, America is like as a nation has always been entrepreneurial in spirit, right? The very identity of America, like if you look from ancient times, I mean, like in the 1800s, has been one of like immigration and just like an entrepreneurial spirit where we come here and we take advantage of the opportunity. And we try to make things of a better life. But what do I mean by the transformation of the 99% into entrepreneurs and investors on the light side? So let's take an example of the nation of Sparta in ancient Greece, right? In Sparta, all of the kids from like a small age were trained to be warriors starting from like the age of seven or maybe even earlier. Uh, like, so basically they were trained from a small age 
to think and act in a certain way, and that was to have like a warrior-like mentality. So when all the citizens of Sparta eventually grew up, most of them would basically be warriors. It was basically a warrior city-state nation, right? Where all the citizens thought and acted in warrior-like ways. The same thing happened in the Viking culture back in the Dark Ages, right? Like when the kids, when the children grew up and like all of the citizens had a certain type of mentality and it was about like a warrior culture. So they grew up fighting each other and then this became like the way they thought and acted. It was the way, it's like a fish breathing in uh, water, right? It's like they have gills and they just breathe in water. They don't even think about it. It's the same way um, uh, like Sparta and the Vikings, they had a culture of, of, of being warriors and thinking in warrior-like ways. So what I'm saying is that the same concept of thinking and acting in a certain way from a small age can be applied to America as well. Instead of thinking of just like in terms of like just getting a job, what we need to do is think in entrepreneurial ways and investing ways. We need to think like entrepreneurs and uh, who are basically thinking of becoming financially free and starting businesses, right? And that is the culture that has to be in, like uh, created on a massive scale in the Western world and especially in America, because that's what actually ultimately leads to a financial, true financial freedom, right? Most of the times we cannot become financially free by just having a job. We can become financially free by uh, through entrepreneurship or investing or a combination of both. And so what I'm saying is that we need to have a culture that propagates that and where we think and act in a certain way. Most of the times the root cause of poverty is not not for like a lack of money, although that's a that's the major cause of it. It's about thinking and acting in a certain way that creates poverty. When we hang around with people that think in po in a poverty mindset, we in inevitably uh, assimilate the thoughts and actions that make us think in poverty-based ways as well. If we hang around with rich people, we'll eventually be assimilating those traits. So what we should do is think and act in the ways of a one percenter on the light side who follows the philosophy of law of one. That is like the law of empathy, essentially, right? There's two ways of thinking amongst the one percent, right? There is like one percenters on the light side and one percenters on the dark side. Dark side one percenters think in the ways of competitiveness, right? Like the wealth is all limited and everything and that there's not enough. And in order for one person to succeed, others have to fail. One percenters on the light side believe in the in provision of value and giving value to others and in the concept of abundance exchange and where it, and it's a concept where like you're going to create business and you're going to create wealth by lifting up all the ships together and that's the concept we should have on a mass scale and it should be like us just breathing it should be like fish Bre uh, just breathing oxygen in water, right? You don't even think about it. So if we assimilate those thoughts and the actions that are there to it, that it becomes a natural thing that we just normally do. We do not think about it. And that's what we should be doing for, as a nation because America and its essence is entrepreneurial in spirit. Like that's how the nation became great in the first place. It became great because immigrants came from all over the world and then they thought in entrepreneurial hustling ways and then they wanted to make it big, right? And they basically had a culture of like, of entrepreneurship and innovation as a whole. And that's what made the nation great in the first place. And that's what we should adopt. We should go back to our roots of thinking as entrepreneurs and investors and think in a very different way, right? And it should be like a culture. And that's, and that's how we can create, we can start transforming the root causes of what creates poverty in the first place, right? Obviously there are more larger scale, scale systemic causes, right? But to, to begin in the to to start somewhere we have to go to ways of thinking and acting that leads to wealth in the first place so anyways this is all i have to say for now right um i want to end this video by saying that it is really important to protect your purchasing power because in the near future the fiat mon money is going to be inflated away right after this economic depression there's going to be a time where um, there's going to be a massive rise in prices and it's going to be inflated away and you need to protect your purchasing power by investing in gold or silver or, uh, or a cryptocurrency that is basically scarce and tangible, right? And, uh, in, the, and in the long term, the solutions of, of uh, the three solutions that I mentioned for long term are also applicable. 
But anyways, this is all I have to say for now. Uh, if you like what I've been talking about, please do subscribe to my channel. And all I have to say is bye for now. I'll see, I'll see you in the next video.